Well, hello. Today we're going to take a quick look at Disney's Jungle Cruise, directed by Jaume Colette Serra. In the early 20th century, Lily Houghton and her brother McGregor, played respectively by Emily Blunt and Jack Whitehall, are searching for some mystical cure-all in the Amazon known as the Tears of the Moon. They hire riverboat captain Frank Wolf, played by Dwayne Johnson, to take them to this treasure. But they aren't the only ones after the Tears of the Moon, as they have to compete with some Germans, led by Prince Joachim, played by Jesse Plemons, and some undead conquistadors. And then it gets weird. This is Disney's latest attempt at making a movie based on one of their theme park rides, because that worked once. In fact, they have been trying to make this movie since 2004. Almost 20 years later, here we are. And the movie actually starts out resembling the Jungle Cruise ride at Disneyland because Frank has essentially created his own version of that ride, except he's on an actual river in an actual jungle. He's got a bunch of mechanical props, he's hired some of the local natives to play these marauding headhunters, and oh my god, so many bad puns. Even later on in the movie, when he's in a situation where he might be in actual danger, he is still making the bad puns because, in his own words, he can't turn it off. Emily Blunt's Lily is basically your standard, strong, independent woman far ahead of her time. And of course, everyone is shocked and appalled by the fact that this person even exists. Who? Oh, what's this? A woman wearing trousers? Oh, well, I never! Frank even takes to calling her pants as a nickname. McGregor is basically the effeminate sidekick who is clearly not cut out for the adventuring life, but he follows Lily pretty much everywhere she goes because she was the only member of his family who did not disown him after he came out, which in the early 20th century, I imagine would be kind of rough. Pretty much the entire cast of this movie did a really good job. Uh, I do think it's a bit weird that The Rock's character, without giving too much away, has an American accent, even though, as we learn later on in the movie, he's not an American, but I guess he couldn't be bothered to put on a fake accent, so he's just speaking in his normal voice. But otherwise, yeah, they're doing a great job. They're having a ton of fun with this very silly movie, and that is one thing I can say in their favor. They all understood the assignment. There is a lot of batshit insane stuff that happens in this movie, and I mostly mean that in a good way. The Germans bring a submarine into the Amazon in order to look for the Tears of the Moon, and even the other characters comment on how ludicrous that is. Somehow Frank's riverboat is able to jump over a torpedo. Sure, why not? Frank has a pet CGI jaguar who is easily the best character in the movie. Although, the CGI maybe could have used another pass. It didn't look all that great. And we have a bunch of cursed undead conquistadors who all have their own magical powers. One of them is made of bees. Bees. But while there is clearly a lot of creativity in this movie, there's not much originality, if that makes sense. There's a bit of Indiana Jones, a bit of the African Queen, a bit of Romancing the Stone. The cursed undead characters are straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean. And considering how simple the actual Jungle Cruise theme park ride is, this movie's plot is incredibly convoluted. There is so much weird stuff going on with the curse that the Conquistadors are under, and every time they explain some new thing about how it works, it just leads to more questions. Paul Giamatti shows up early on in the movie as some angry harbor master, and at first it seems like he's going to be one of the movie's villains, but once they leave the harbor and set out on their journey, he's just kind of forgotten. Which makes me wonder why his character is in the movie at all. As for how the natives are portrayed in this movie, it's certainly better than the ride, and I know that's a low bar, but nevertheless, they did improve on that. I thought Veronica Falcon was really good as Trader Sam, and I did appreciate how the natives are just acting like wild savages because that's what Frank hired them to do. Basically, they're exploiting the prejudices of Frank's paying customers so they can all make more money. And at least at first, it seemed like they were trying to be a bit more progressive, but... Then there was a point where they seemed to kind of forget about that and just fell back onto the tropes, and I'm like, no! What are you doing? You were going in the right direction, but you made a wrong turn somewhere. What happened here? And for some strange reason, they based the musical theme for this movie on Metallica's Nothing Else Matters. 
One of the first things you hear is a Spanish guitar playing that opening riff. And I am going to need the filmmakers to explain to me exactly how they came to the conclusion that this was a good idea. Show your work. Don't get me wrong, I like the song, just... What? And I thought Black Widow's use of Smells Like Teen Spirit was weird. Overall, it's convoluted, it's derivative, it's a bit too long, and it made some very puzzling choices. But it did have its moments, the cast were having fun with it, and for the most part, so was I. I would not recommend paying the theater price or the Disney Plus premium price to see this, but after its theatrical run, it's worth a rental. Or just wait for it to hit Disney Plus without the premium. And that's all I have to say about Jungle Cruise. Till next time, take care.